In this session, let's look at Excel's sensitivity report and try to understand what is going on in each of the cells that we see in the report. Right, so uh, why don't we just go ahead and look at our actual sensitivity report in Excel. So here, uh, we want to fully understand what's going on with Excel's reports um, whenever we produce our, our optimal solution. So in Excel's sensitivity report, there are always two sections, all right? The variable cells and then the constraints. Uh, forget about the title, why it's called variable cells and constraints, but essentially this first section answers the first sensitivity question. Remember what's the sensitivity question? Uh, it was basically about um, if, right? If one of the objective function coefficients is changed, will optimal solution be changed, right? So this was the first uh, question that we were wondering and let's let's just since we are typing uh, our understanding about the first section let me just put in this this guarantee right the guarantee is uh, optimal solution will not be changed so let me just type this in first so that's like put it there and we can uh, you will soon understand why, right? So there's a guarantee, guarantee that the optimal solution will not change. <clears throat> now, uh, how does it answer the first question? Let's look at all the numbers here. And if we have, uh, so here, the variable cells uh, section here, it, it's called one row per decision variable. All right, one row per decision variable. So if, so if we have five decision variables, we will have five rows. The first column, let's understand the easier columns first. Uh, it's about the name of the decision variable. That's easy. Uh, Excel basically copied from what we have given it. Okay. Then we have the, the objective coefficient. We should recognize this. Do you recognize this? These are the coefficients on the objective function. Again, it's copied from uh, what we have provided to Excel. So that's easy, we recognize that. And then we have the final value, which is uh, the sensitivity reports way of saying these are the object, uh, the optimal solution. So 15 for D and 17.5 for P, like this. All right, so it's nicely organized, nothing new. We have that in our original screen. And the next uh, two columns will be important. So now the question is, if we increase, example, right? If we increase objective function, objective coefficient from 10 to 13, all right? So proposed change is from 10 to 13. Then our main concern, will the optimal solution change? Will the optimal solution change? Answer is, by looking at allowable increase and allowable decrease. The way we look at it is somewhat like this. Starting from 10, right, where the current coefficient is, allowable decrease tells us to what extent we can decrease the coefficient's value from the current value. So the current value is 10. Uh, the maximum we can reduce to is 7.5. All right, so we can reduce current coefficient of 10 down to 7.5. Why? Because the interval is 2.5, the allowable decrease. And we can increase the current coefficient by 12.5 units, so all the way to 22.5 units. In other words, we can change the objective coefficient for D right, in this particular row anywhere from 7.5 to 22.5 and what happens and yes they have a guarantee comes in and the sensitivity report guarantees that the optimal solution will not change in other words if you change the objective coefficient 10 to 13 and you click solver 
the optimal solution will be well if we didn't know about this we might say well i think it will change uh, i just don't know what the values are because i don't want to be excel solver answer no change d will still be 15 p will be seven still be 17.5 right let's just try it out okay so we propose to increase from 10 to 13 yeah, because we can get more profits so we do that and original values 15 17.5 we erase it and we click solver and solve and answer is 17 15 and 17.5 no change but the objective value has changed right because it is calculated from 15 times 13 originally it was 10 so we do get increased amount of profits good thing hope now you appreciate is that the optimal solution didn't change so we don't have to do anything we can just increase our operations are the same because we still produce 15 d deluxe bike and 17.5 p the professional bikes something like that uh, without any disturbance to our normal operations we can get higher profits so we go ahead and do it so that's nice right oh if we increase to 13 we can then how about uh to 20 well uh a sort of trial and error if we didn't know sensitivity analysis we do it again answer is 15 17.5 same so that emboldens us right so how about 25 and we solve it again and answer is oh all totally lopsided now stop production of professional bikes increase a lot more production of deluxe bikes crazy right so if you can empathize the enormity of having such drastic change in the optimal solution then you appreciate why we may not want to just go all the way to 25 right so instead of trying one by one at a time we know that the maximum extent is to go up to 22.5. We are that exact. 23, optimal solution will change, right? Uh, the guarantee is no longer valid. Yeah? And in some cases, even when you go beyond the uh, allowable range, the range of optimality that is, uh, maybe, all right, just maybe, the optimal solution will still hold, but we can't tell, right? So basically the system cannot guarantee anymore. So not bad for a start that uh, right away, we know to what extent we can shake the tree and not have all the hanging apples drop to the floor, right? So, so that's nice, we can shake the system. And the other thing to notice is that um, it is not symmetrical. Notice that, that um, for coefficient 10, uh, normally when we say, do you know how much I can disturb the 10 we our answer typically will be mm, let me see plus minus two yeah we tend to give very symmetric kind of estimates but excel is not estimating or guessing excel is after analyzing the entire system it knows all the corners and the and the and the edges it has the values and now it presents to us in the sense of or of, of of allowable change in the coefficient so we know precisely uh that on the plus side we can increase to a very large extent without disturbing the system but on the minus side better be careful right we only have 2.5 units to uh, uh to jiggle, jiggle about our coefficient so this is another new piece of information that the allowable change in the coefficient for 10 is very asymmetrical yeah and it's the other way around in terms of symmetry for coefficient p 15 15 can go on the plus side very little amount five but on the downside you can go to 8.33 yeah so let's just finish up the uh, description here so if we adjust downwards 15 one five we can go as low as 6.67 let's say right all the way to uh, 15 plus 5 so that's 20 so for 15 that coefficient alone if we change this 15 alone we can change we can set it to anywhere from 6.67 to 20 without disturbing 
uh, the guarantee and this that is the optimal solution is still going to be 15 17.5 easy